you know, it's um coming off of, of 2021 um and we touched on it a little bit earlier in this episode but you know it, there was almost a real fight at, at certain points to sort of feel like the players were trying to get their their voices heard and you know speaking earlier with with Jessica Berman a little bit and speaking with you now it it sort of seems that the things that have sort of been coming up is that it's it's a mutual priority um, for both parties here to to make sure that there's a good relationship between the league and its players to continue to build those lines of communications in order to foster continued good relationships. Is there a point now where maybe looking at things laid out in front as as you, whether it's yourself or or your or your peers, where you're feeling like maybe now for the first time in a long time, voices are being taken into consideration and, and being heard? I think so. Um, I definitely think so. I think that might just come with, um, you know, people that are in power positions are being very professional about um, how it is that they go about making some of these decisions. And uh, making them in isolation hasn't worked in the past. Um, asking a player what her true experience is and what she would like to see, and then making the decision based on that is going to have an effect on that player, a positive effect. Um, and I think you even get the, um, you even, that is a way to build trust. Um, I think trust is something that's always talked about, but it's, um, it is, it requires action. And I think that that's what we're seeing. So not only are we taking part in these decisions, um, having taken part in those decisions is uh, a direct effect of an improvement in trust, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense, Tori. Um, thanks. I mean, you're letting us pick your brain so much on this, which has been your your world and consumed you over, I mean, the last few weeks and months, but years almost, it seems like, as the president of the PA Um and now I want to ask about you because you're a great player in this league on a, on a great team, um, suffered a bit of an injury at the end of the 2021 season. How you doing? How you holding up with that? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing all right. Um, last year was a unprecedented an unprecedented year for me. Um, as far as just everything I was having to manage mentally, emotionally, then physically, um, it was really difficult, but um, I think it was just kind of, you know, a reset, a chance for reflection on why it is that I'm doing what I'm doing. A lot of the stuff that I was doing off the field last year, I am now seeing, goodness, I'm now seeing how important some of that work is. Um, but yes, I think with, with my injury rehab is going, going very well. Um, I'm not trying to rush through the process. I don't think that will help me, but um, I am out in sunny California, so that's always great too. Um, but I'm going to be really excited to to rejoin the team. I love being around them, and also just kind of excited to be a bit of a fan for a while. Um, I'll certainly be involved from a as much as I can be, you know, being three hours time difference behind. But um, really excited to see how the Challenge Cup goes and how you know we can back up what we did in the fall, you know, winning a championship. Now we've, we've got a target on our back. And um, I think it's important that we push to, to repeat, you know, we can't be um, complacent. It is time to gun for another championship. And um, I'm just excited to see, to see what the team can do. And um, also always available to, to help and assist any way I can, um, even though I'm having to rehab, which is probably my biggest focus right now. I love the vibe, sending good vibes across the country to Washington spirit, going, gunning for that two P looking to win the championship again. So you mentioned you're in California, you're rehabbing there. Have you had a chance to kind of check in with your players? Are, are you in touch with them? Are you really focusing on your individual rehab? And if you are checking in with them, how's it going for preseason for the spirit? <laughs> yeah, I think, um, gosh, such a great problem to have, but I think for probably two weeks of preseason, we were missing 11 players. Um, so which that's to national team duty, which is amazing. That's so, so incredibly impressive. Um, a huge props to all of the players that got called in and some of these younger players too. 
I think that's great experience for them to have and only strengthens um, us as a club. Um, and I think, yeah, I have been checking in. I think um, been checking in not only with players, but with staff. Um, I am lucky to be involved in some of the discussions in improving the club going forward too. Um, I think everything, you know, all the hard work and energy that we put into things last year, it can't be, um, there has to be action behind it and it's going to be a, you know, a long process to Im improve things and, um, make things better. And player voice is always helpful as I've said already. Um, so yeah, I, they are doing, they're doing great. They're doing fine. Um, really missing them. It's, it's hard to be away. Um, definitely have some FOMO every now and then, but, um, I, I'm just, yeah, I'm proud of everything that they have going on and, and really excited to watch them in, in the challenge cup. We're excited too. You know, you're, you're keeping an eye on your teammates. We're keeping an eye on the spirit as well. We're going to be excited to see what, uh, what the team is going to bring in 2022. This has been a delightful conversation. Tori, something that we do to, to close out our uh, guest segments is we like to maybe have a, a little bit of fun, lighthearted question to sort of close out on things. And you are addressing and handling preseason a little bit differently. Like you said, you're focusing on the rehab portion of it for yourself. But a common thread that's come up when we're talking to some of your other, your peers or teammates across the league during preseason was concepts of like getting back into a rhythm, getting back into a routine of things. And that still comes into play when you're rehabbing back from an injury. So I'm going to pitch you uh, the same question that we've sort of been asking of other folks on the show when it comes to, uh, you know, getting into uh, the routine of things in, in a preseason, is there like a, a go-to a, it's a two-parter a, are you a coffee drinker? And, and B, if, if you are or not, uh, what is your sort of go-to like uh, pre kind of scrimmage or pre routine type of beverage pre, pre or post, it can be either or before or after. <laughs> This is a great question. I had no idea where that was going to go. So I was a little nervous. Um, sometimes when I get asked like the real personal, not personal <laughs> questions, but like, what's something we don't know about you? I can never think of anything. So um, this is a good one because I am very routine driven. Um, I like to know exactly what my schedule looks like uh, the day before, um, you know, and I think out here that has been top priority for me. I, I want to know exactly what my day looks like. And luckily I have rehab pretty much at the same time every single day, but, um, I am a coffee drinker. Um, I think most people know that even people who don't know me, I am a coffee snob through and through. Um, but I will get up in the morning. That is the first thing I do. I go grab my coffee. I actually go to the beach because this is something I know I won't have, um, come summer and I'm trying to take as much advantage of it as I can. So I have my coffee on the beach. I'll do my morning meditation there, come back, do uh, breakfast, get breakfast ready, get supplements ready. And then um, I go and I'm at rehab for three, sometimes three plus hours. Um, and then I'm already into the evening after that. And that's kind of um, my day. So I'm a little boring at the moment, but it's really helping me stay on task and you know, float some calls all through that. Um, that's kind of, yeah, that's, that's where I'm spending most of my time, but, um, coffee drinker. Yes. Mm -hmm. Coffee Caffeine. drinker on the beach too. That's like, yeah, chef's kiss the best, the best. Yes. <laughs> I like that. It I like that added component to it. Sometimes it's like we've heard a lot of different wide variety. It's like, oh, we like the just the regular black coffee. Some people are more of a latte. We've had people expose themselves and say, listen, not a coffee drinker. We prefer teas or some other type of beverage to get the caffeine in it. But I like the the two components of coffee and a beach. I love that. <laughs> <laughs>